it's been a long freaking time since we've done a Black Clover video, so that means we'll have to go extra, extra, extra balls deep. Black Clover's war arc has been quite fire lately, and I really do think this has got the potential to be the greatest arc yet. Even better than the elf arc. Speaking of which, we've got a whole series explaining the elf arc that will end your confusion on it. I mean, since you guys ask me all the time about what the hell is going on on social media, be sure to check out the link below. But for now, we're focusing on the current state of Black Clover and my new theories using bold deep prediction magic on what is actually going on. And brrrah, we got members of the Elite Golden Dawn just straight up dying. This is the supposed best squad in the Clover Kingdom. Even after the Black Bulls rose to stardom, the Golden Dawn still remained on top and yet half the squad just dies in a chapter. These guys even retained some of the elf power from the previous arc but still got stomped and apparently within hardly any time at all. Like a third of an anime episode, probably half the Golden Dawn is annihilated and that's just against a few mages from the Spade Kingdom at that. This is really interesting because it sets up the Spade Kingdom and more specifically the Dark Triad. Zeno was the only one of the triads at the Golden Dawn headquarters and he defeats William without even taking his hands out of his pockets. This is the same William, who is naturally gifted with arcane magic, who retains some of his elf power with a six month time skip on top of that, training his ass off, and the dude literally didn't take his hands out of his pocket, as I said, he plans to take him away to steal his arcane magic for the Spade Kingdom, as this was insinuated to us in chapter 235 where he declares that he will take it. Holy look at all this damage! And we're gonna repair it using flex shot. Zeno's power scaling has been pretty much explained to us in chapter 227, where he takes over the Diamond Kingdom himself as he defeats over 25 mages on his own, which by the way included multiple captain level mages. He didn't even break a sweat, and again, nor did he take his hands out of his pocket that time too. What the hell? Luck himself said he did not want to fight him, foreshadowing the fact of how dangerous he is. People literally feel the aura of death around him as he uses 80% of mages jukulous power as he was practicing to get used to it. This puts it into perspective as to why the Dark Triad was able to overthrow Yuno's family in the past on their own using their combination of powers with Majukula. I feel like the trio are more intimidating than the word magic devil themselves and they've only been around let's say for a third as many chapters. Majukula is about to smash some of these fools and actually kill some of these characters off the show. That will make him a more satisfying main villain since everyone in the community kept asking for a more serious turn from Black Clover. Anyway, as we all know, Yuna discovers everything that Gatherois, you know what, I know I'm pronunciating this shit wrong, Gatherois, you know, what kind of name is this man? You might as well call this guy Wasteman. Anyway, Wasteman right here, he did this to his squad mates, right? And he is instantly ready to throw hands. As I said before, Tabata will use this arc to develop Yuno's character because he realized that most people just don't care much for Yuno. They think he's boring and not all that deep. Some people think he's only there to motivate Asta and make us unsure about hmm, who will become Wizard King. A perfectly justifiable opinion, right? Wrong. Tabata probably did this on purpose because for a series to go on as long as One Piece as he states he possibly could and wants to, Yuno's character arc came across seamless as he interconnected his connection to Spade Kingdom with Asta and Noel. He's using the trio to represent the opposite ideologies of the Dark Triad. Some speculate that the term Dark Triad was inspired from the psychological term as each of the characters we see represents each trait. Research on the term Dark Triad traits means that people scoring high on these traits are more likely to commit crimes, causing social distress and creating severe problems for an organization, especially if they are in leadership positions. Hmm, I guess that's pretty close, right? All three Dark Triad traits includes narcissism, which is categorized by pride, egotism and a lack of empathy which is Varnica since she displayed these traits wanting to go all out complaining that she wasn't allowed to but Zeno could and she wanted to use her powers and you know she's a thought. <laughs> I don't know why you said that. Oh my god I'm sorry guys. If she breathes, she's a thought! 
The second trait is Machiavellianism, which is characterized by manipulation and exploitation of others, an absence of morality, unemotional callousness, and a higher level of self-interest, which is daunting. As Zeno asked him, why did they wait six months to destroy everyone? And he said, why the hell not? It's because we can. It's because we are all powerful. The third trait is psychopathy, which is characterized by continuous antisocial behavior, impulsivity, selfishness, unemotional and remorselessness, which I would say is Zeno, as again, he doesn't even take his hands out of his pockets, goddammit, whilst killing all kinds of mans left, right, center, like nothing, blood spilling everywhere, everyone screaming like, oh god, no, the boat is in mine, oh man, I'm dying, screaming going on, and death is everywhere, and the guy just doesn't give a shit, he's also antisocial with the other Dark Tribe members when he doesn't respond properly. Now, on the opposite spectrum of all of this is the Light Triad, who are Asta, Yuno, and well, this is represented with the humanism, which is defined as believing in the inherent dignity and worth of other humans. We have seen this with all three characters. Astor is a no-brainer, but Yuna recently shared this thought. Noelle too, when she was taking care of her family and a poor girl at a festival. The second trait is Cantanianism, meaning to treat people as ends unto themselves, not just as unwitting pawns in your personal game of chess. Again, very important if Astor and Yuna want to become Wizard King, since the saying goes, absolute power corrupts absolutely. They cannot be people that use their position for the wrong means. Noelle as a royal takes heed to this too for her character development. Finally, the third trait being faith in humanity, which is to believe that other humans are fundamentally good and not out to get you. Again, no brainer fam, but I believe this balls deep analysis makes a lot of sense and I hope with that you can smash that like button for me guys and the notification bell to to join the Black Clover community on Anime Boots Deep. Let's try and get mm, 10,000 likes. And if we do, I'll do another video explaining arcane magic for you guys. Anyway, going back to the arc, I believe we'll become more invested in Yuno's character as it progresses. In chapter 236, we see his character remember his conversations with Asta. He agrees with him in terms of what makes a family. That it isn't the blood, but the bond that you create together through experiences. Yuno Yuno now has the same outlook as Asta, therefore becoming the same competitor as him for the title of Wizard King, as Tabata is saying Yuno also wants to end discrimination and it is true competition that we can think of now. This arc has raised a lot of questions as to how it will play out, because Yuno being revealed as the Prince of Spade is something that challenges the foundation on what made him who he is and his dream. In one chapter, this was flipped on its head and now Yuno has a decision to make. Should he return to his alleged place of origin or should he remain where he's called home his whole life. Gatheroyce admits to massacring his friends and proceeds to do the same to Yuno, but he doesn't let him and busts out some insane dodging skills. The dude pretty much looks like he has ultra instinct. He also grabs his comrades. I mean, is there nothing this man can't do? He's finessing this tier zero mage like he ain't shit. <laughs> Yuno asks Gatheroyce why he attacked the base, but of course his response is who cares? Cause why would a blockheaded brute like him give a crap about why he's attacking an enemy base? Of course! But he does mention that the Dark Tribe needs arcane stage mages, and this could be for any number of reasons. One of them being because they are compatible with the devil they are in possession of, right? Asta and Sekiri are arcane mages because they have connections with the other world, the one the word magic devil came from. It's possible that they have untapped power that the Spade Nation is aware of. Power they themselves don't even know about, or do they? We haven't seen much of Asta and we've seen even less of Sekri, so for all we know they could be at least somewhat aware of their hidden potential. Even if they don't know how to tap into it just yet, the Heart Queen has insinuated that they have something special. Now this is the power of Weg that Julius Novocrono mentioned earlier in the chapters to Asta, and I presume this plot device is going to be explored really soon as it will be the answer on how they will get a power boost. This could be something along the lines of full black mode from Asta or him finally unlocking two wings that he foreshadowed against the devil. We also get a reference to the last spade king, the ones the triad killed 15 to 16 years ago. According to Gary Royce, he was a peace loving idiot and that's why they butchered him. This may be even more reason for Yuno to embrace his bloodline and act like the prince as he was a noble from a family that actually lived 
lives up to his ideals. We then see Yuno activate his most powerful spell, the Spirit of Zephyr. He whips out this mighty wind blade that all the women's like and slices clean through Gederois. And I think we need to realize Yuno just straight up killed someone in cold blood. Moving on to chapter 237, in a flashback, William explains that everyone in the Golden Dawn still has some of the magic the elves gave them before they left. It may be a bit strange and shameful using magic that was once used to destroy the kingdom but to now save it, William says it's all for the good of the country as he is repenting for his sins. What more can I say about a guy that is willing to sacrifice his own life against Zeno that is literally crucified like a certain someone? Woo! Tabata really trying to be a genius, ain't he? The way the chapter ends is indicative of the lengths William is willing to go to serve the nation. If we disregard what he said last week about how no one can hurt his comrades, even though he willingly let an ancient race try to just do that, we can understand that this is the new William, the one that will actually act like a magic knight and he realized how wrong he was for what he did. It is declared that he is an arcane mage because this has been foreshadowed to us before. If you can remember in his backstory, William says that he was born with a cursed mark on his head that caused people to treat him differently. However, we also find out he was born with a rare magic called World Tree Magic that is linked to Yggdrasil, 100% confirmed in the manga. This is the same mythology that Tabata has been inspired for for everything that we have seen in Black Clover. In addition, we learn in the Word Magic Devil arc that the curse that he gave to Yami on his arm when the magic touched him is exactly similar to the one William was born with. In chapter 228, the Heart Queen mentions that arc Arcane magic users are people that have been born with unnatural magic that gives them the ability to defeat the devils. Adding all of these dots together, we know William has rare tree magic that the Spade Kingdom would like for themselves, right? The concept of Yggdrasil that we all know is that it's an immense mythical tree that plays a central role in Norse cosmology, where it connects the nine worlds, right? And let's not forget that the word magic devil just mentioned the demons being from another world completely. And the Spade Nation is run by Majokula, who has even darker intentions to take over the whole world. So one of the reasons why he wants all the arcane magic users is because he wants to incarnate even more devils into these people and to connect the devil world, the other world, back to the human one just as it was thousands and thousands of years ago so that their race can reign supreme. We know for a fact from the elf arc that the void that they created before was a pact with the humans of the ancient humans that lived before, they had to protect this place from devils ever appearing again. William plays an important role to them because he may hold a connection with his magic that Majukula wants for himself to open the other world or make him a devil again by throwing him into despair. This is why Aster's swords are called demon destroyer swords because in the past with the dwarves that it is all linked together. This is just my bold deep analysis right? So you're probably wondering to yourself, is Yuno going to die? How the hell is he going to to defeat Zeno, this overpowered dude who defeated William with hands still in his pockets for God's sake. Well, using Ball's deep prediction magic, with the fact that in the previous chapters, Sabata has already foreshadowed the fact that the Heart Queen is omniscient, she can see into other kingdoms and what they are doing. This is how she manipulated Arsta to visit her in the first place so that he can help her with her curse that she received from Majukula. This is also how she knew everything that we know, like she read the goddamn manga that we did, she knew about the word magic devil, Julius being a kid again, and even more. Further to the fact that she just admitted in recent chapters that she has the power to detect devil powers quite easily due to her curse. This therefore means since Yuno just faced tier 0 opponents with Zeno using devil powers, it obviously means that she must have detected this presence and saw what was happening. So I'm using my bold reprediction magic that she will send help to Yuno to face Zeno and in my opinion it should either be the captains or all and Noel themselves since all their stories are interconnected. This will progress the story fantastically as Zeno will then see Asta who is in control of the devil that they would want and this would then expand the stories tremendously. There are only three versions of events that I think will happen and that's either Yuno getting captured or help being sent through the captains or the Heart Queen sending Asta and Noel and those guys. If they're after arcane mages and they've got William then we know they'll also be after Asta and Sekhar. 
Zachary and they're more than likely be able to capture them as well. This is why we have that cliffhanger that Aster may or may not die by the end of this arc because he's that important. This is all my theories, all my analysis of my Black Clover videos all coming together and coming true because at the end of the day you guys all know I am Tabata himself. Du, du, du. Imagine there's a plot twist like that where I reveal that I am Tabata. That's fucking great. <laughs> I'm joking. Anyway, guys, that's my analysis for the week. Let me know your opinion in the comment section below. Don't forget to follow me on social media, and I'll see you guys next time.